the uh, longtime Eagles quarterback, uh, joining us here in the final hour. By the way, 877 dp show our Twitter handle at DP Show. We'll get to your phone calls, your tweets, best and worst of the weekend. That'll be coming up. Our poll question, McLovin, can you give me the poll question and we'll talk to Jaws? Yeah, if you were the Eagles and were offered a second round pick for Nick Foles, would you take it? All right. What are the results oh, so far? 53% say yes. Jaws, let me start there with Nick Foles. Mm -hmm. What would you want to do if you're Nick Foles? Uh, enjoy what he just accomplished, winning the Super Bowl. The time will tell how the market will bear out. The number one thing is really the health of Carson Wentz. Everyone could say he's going to be back, he's going to be 100%, bigger, stronger, faster. There's no guarantee of that. So now you know you have an insurance policy in Nick Foles, a Super Bowl MVP, a guy that had an incredible run in the postseason, a la Joe Flacco a few years ago. And in this league, with injuries, you got to have two at that position. If you ran the Eagles, what are you doing with Foles? I'm going to entertain offers. I'm going to talk to Nick and ask him what he would like to do. I think he deserves that after what he accomplished. Um, time will tell. I, I think you know we were looking for an immediate result to the question, and it's going to take time. Hey, there, I, you and I have had numerous conversations through the years, and you know my position on quarterbacks this league. About half the teams have a starting quarterback. About 16 other teams are looking for a starting quarterback. I'm talking about a guy that's going to give you 70 snaps every single week, 16 weeks is going to be consistent. About half the teams have that guy. Nick has now shown yeah. he can be that guy. And he played at Arizona. I'm curious about the Cardinals in this equation, if that matters yeah. at all. But, you know, and what can you get? for Nick Foles. It'd be strange, though, that you have the Super Bowl MVP <laughs> and you're trading the Super Bowl MVP. But you also know you have a, a quarterback that for most of the season in Carson Wentz, that was the league MVP. So that's a great dilemma for Howie Roseman and Joe Douglas to have. <laughs> uh, the hiring of Doug Peterson, because as I mentioned to him on the podium, I'm like, how do you explain this? Nine years ago, you're coaching high school yeah, football. Yeah, and great, here you are. Great question, by the way. Just a great question, because um, as, as you know, I was part of the search committee to find the next Eagles head coach two years ago, and uh, I was honored that Jeffrey asked me to be part of that committee. And the interviews were very, very long. The Adam Gaze, the Ben McAdoo's, with all these you know coaches of very high-profile guys, and they're all very, very smart X's and O's. Brilliant. Every guy that we had in was a brilliant X's and O coach. You don't get to that level unless you're really good. But Jeffrey Lurie talked about something else, which, you know, was new to me. I'm a football guy, you know, grind it out, let's go. Emotional intelligence. And, and I learned that from him, emotional intelligence. Explain that. And, and that's what Doug ended up having. It's not always about the X's and O's. It's about getting your arms around your team and understanding each individual personality of that team. And get 53 guys and 20-some-odd coaches working together to be the consummate team, because football is the consummate team game. And you needed that emotional intelligence not to be like this, up and down, to be consistent. And the one thing we, we have seen with Doug Peterson is the consistency. And I'll even go back to last year where I was a little skeptical of his over-aggressive nature, but that's who he is. That's who he wants to be. He's not afraid. He's and, not and scared you, at all. But you look at those fourth down calls, and people will look at this as an anomaly. He was going on fourth down during the regular season, the call with Foles on fourth down where he catches the touchdown pass. But that call with five minutes to go, the pass to Ertz is the Super Bowl. It's a Super Bowl. You're at the 40-yard line. Give Tom Brady the ball at the 40-yard line. With the lead, the game's over. I mean, you talk about... Having a, the courage that to make crazy. that call. And by the way, Nick made an unbelievable play. It'll go unnoticed. And only because I played the position for 17 years, he had pressure. He had pressure coming aside. He, he needed to buy a little time to let that little rub work. And he bought a little bit of time and hit Zach Ertz. Those are the little nuances of the game that I always look for, especially at the quarterback position. Well, I know Foles is your MVP, but... I, you know, I always look at, like when the Broncos won their uh, Super Bowl in, uh, against Green Bay, and I said the offensive line was the MVP because they, they handled Green Bay and, and they, you know, Terrell Davis and, you know, they got the, the yards there, protected L.A. I thought Doug Peterson was the MVP. Probably so. And especially when you look the way this game played out. I mean, Tom Brady threw for 505 yards. If you'd have told me that before the game, I'd have said the Eagles are getting clobbered. Yes. Because I thought that the edge the Eagles had was their defensive line. And oh, by the way, you know, they, they did not play well as a unit. Brandon Graham, though, 
makes the play that wins the Super Bowl. Wouldn't you like to have seen what would have happened? You wouldn't have liked to have seen what would have happened. You <laughs> no, probably know what would have happened. Brady, with yeah. two minutes and 27 seconds left, if he doesn't have that fumble. I, I think we I think we are all thinking we're going to lose this football game. I'm, I'm, I'm in the Eagles section. I got my wife next to me. And, you know, it's, it's you, you could feel. Oh, legal, I, know. You know, I mean, Tom's got the ball. It's Hell, Tom even Brady. with a minute left, and, Charles. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he got the Hail Mary to the end zone, and that was – breathtaking yes. you know I mean it was that ball's bobbling around and I couldn't see it from my perspective I immediately looked up to the scoreboard which is massive because I couldn't see where the ball was finally I saw it trickling on the ground whew, it's like oh my goodness you, you it's never over when you play Belichick and Brady and I heard some of the Eagles comments after the game from the players it, it was awesome they, they knew going in Hey, it's not 59 minutes and 59 seconds. You play Brady, you play the Patriots, you strap it on for 60 minutes. Ron Jaworski joining us here in our man cave in Minneapolis. What Could Brady have done anything different? I don't think so. I'm, I, you know, I mean, Tom, Tom was terrific. You he guys, was. I mean, Brandon Graham makes out. one play. I mean, they're all, I thought the Pats line played great. They, they, they ran the ball efficiently. I mean, the, the yardage w w was incredible. I mean, a couple of miscues in Tom drops a pass. By the oh way, when was God. the last time in a Super Bowl or any game where the quarterback was a targeted receiver twice? You know, one goes for a touchdown. So the difference in this game really was Foles can catch and Tom can't. But imagine mm -hmm. if Brady catches that and he gets lit up. Like, you put him out there. Now, you know, if he's going to catch it and go out of bounds is probably right. what the game plan yeah. is. But... I don't know. It felt like. Well, by the way, Foles could have got lit up too. So, yeah. you know, I mean, and that's a, a, both coaches were, were aggressive, taking their shots, and uh, it, I, I mean, it was a ter I don't know if there has been a better uh, Super Bowl. I really don't. There have been great games. Last year's game was phenomenal, but uh, this one maybe because I had kind of a, a very rooting interest in this game was just a terrific football game. But the defense for the Patriots is what surprised me more than anything. I mean, I'm not surprised that, the, no. that Brady was going to carve up the Eagles' secondary. I didn't think it's a very good secondary. I, 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 quite honestly, Dan, I'm not surprised. The Patriots have been, <clears throat> excuse me, a bend-and-break style defense all season long. Between the 20s, they give up a lot of yards. But they usually bow their back when they get in the red zone and they hold people to field goals. Uh, but it's a defense that has lacked a consistent pass rush all season long. And Nick had a lot of time. I mean, he was terrific on third down. And, of course, you know, under Doug Peterson, Frank Reich, John Filippo. This Eagles offense has been a fantastic third down offense all season long and a red zone offense. And I call third down the money down and you kick field goals in the red zone, yeah. you lose. You got to score touchdowns. Yeah. This whole what is a catch and not a catch, Jones, is it, it's got to be cleaned up because to me, let it, whatever you do when you get over the yeah. goal line, I don't, I don't care. You got the ball, get over the goal line, you, you have it in your hands. I don't care yeah. when you hit the ground. I don't right. care. You catch it and you go out of bounds and you drop it. I don't care. So why, how do we clean this? Yeah. What is a catch and not a catch? Well, the commissioner's made it crystal clear. This rule has to be clarified or changed so we all understand it. When that play happened, I mean, I'm in the section, and I got 50 people, like, staring at me. Jaws, Jaws, what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I, I'm not sure I want to give you an answer here because who knows how it's going to be interpreted. I mean, they were razor, razor thin decisions. There are no question. The Corey Clement play? Very close During as well. During the regular season, there, that yeah. to me is overturned. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, there was a little bobble before the foot came down. I'm going, this one might go over the way. And then, you know, uh, then obviously Ertz's catch. Yeah, you know, we, we saw what happened uh, in, in Pittsburgh. You know, I mean, we, we just, you just don't know. And it, it should be pretty simple. It should be obvious if it's a catch. And, 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 and my question is, why do we change the rules, what a catch is on the field, in the end zone, or on the sideline? A catch Got to be a catch. All the same. Make it consistent. Yeah, it just drives me crazy. Though. Oh, it, I mean, the game has become a replay game, and we just don't know. Because I mean, it was interminable, the amount of time, and you're waiting to oh, see if Ertz has got a touchdown. Well, it's gonna, it determines the yeah. winner or loser yeah. of the Super Bowl. Yeah. And you got a bunch of guys with their clicker going, uh, right? Because <laughs> like, I hold that clicker a lot, you know? <laughs> Did you wake up this morning and go, we won the Super Bowl? I'm still pinching myself, Dan. There, there's, it, it, it's Philadelphia. You know, um, we're, I mean, front, you're, you're we're front runners. We're high. We're low. That, that's just the way I've been in Philadelphia since 1977. But it's, you're still the face of that franchise, or at least you've been well, I, in the city. You are. Well, I, I made that my home. You know, and uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I made it my home. I'm committed to Philadelphia, committed to the Eagles. Um, I get emotional the fact that, um, you know, they won the Super Bowl. It's pretty exciting. Um,
Those emotions, yeah. hey, I can relate to that. Yeah. Because, you know, you live and died. You went to a Super Bowl. You lost the Super yeah, Bowl. That, that, that ring says NFC champs. It doesn't say world champs. Yeah. You can now say world champions. And I, I really respected the players this week because they were talking about the, the 39 Super Bowl team, the, 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 the Super Bowl 15, our team, and how they're playing for all the guys, all the Eagles. And, the, you know, love it, man. That, that went a long way. Well, I think that you always wore it because you didn't get that Super Bowl yeah. and you feel like somehow you let them down, whereas you got to the Super Bowl and you hope that you represented your city well. You know, I, I think, you know, the teams that lost Super Bowls easily could have won the Super Bowl, but we didn't. Yeah. You know, I mean, you work just as hard, you train just as hard, you put all the time in that you have to, just as so much as the teams that, that won the Super Bowl. But when you don't get it, you, feel, you not only feel you let yourself down, your teammates, the organization, but the fans. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I genuinely felt after we lost in Super Bowl 15, I, I was mad at myself that we lost, but I was, I was more upset because I think we let down a whole, you know, a whole community. And uh, that's why I feel so good that this team was, was able to accomplish that. Well, you got that parade coming yeah. up. I'll be there. <laughs> a lot of Philly guys. We're going we're gonna be there having some fun. Right. Jaws, thank you for coming by. Always great to be with you. Can Dan. McLevin go on a float? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to float. No, no. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, lower but, man grad. Can hey. McLovin We got the Philly. Hey, we're here. We're ready to go. But is he allowed to be on a float? Do you Absolutely. Think? Absolutely. Let's do it. Well, yeah, but you're saying can, that, and then McLevin's going to walk we, onto a float and get knocked off. They'll throw well, him let, off. Let me, let, me, let me talk to Howie Roseman, Jeffrey Lurie, Don Smolins Smolinski. We'll get, we'll get everybody on. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying yes, because we just told him we're going to Pebble Beach next week. Oh, wait, I'll trade. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that didn't That yeah. didn't last long. You got your loyalties, but you love golf more, apparently, yeah, there, Jaws. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. Ron Thanks, Jaworski. Dan. Thank you, guys. Man, understandably emotional. All right, we'll come yeah. back right after this in the Dan Patrick Show. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.